Okay, let's uh, take a look at the model of monopolistic competition when we apply it to trade. So as you'll recall, in the model of monopolistic competition, we have a, um, an industry, and we represent uh, that industry by looking at one firm in the industry. The firm has a, and we assume that the firms are basically all the same, except that they're selling differentiated products. Um, so they all have the same cost structure, uh, they all face the same market demand, but each one of them faces a more elastic individual demand because their product is different from other uh, competitors' products. So each firm has an average cost curve, a marginal cost curve, and each firm f confronts a downward sloping elastic demand curve. They think that they can sell a lot uh, if they lower price. So, as we normally have, the uh, firm sets marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, which would be right here, and that determines the production Q1, and then the firm looks to the demand curve to see how much it should charge for that Q1, because the whole point of being a monopolist is you charge a higher price than your than your cost, and we note that that price then would be would be this price. Now, why do we pick this price? Because uh, we pick it because at this price, the price is equal to average cost. So we're measuring average cost by the average cost curve. So since average cost equals price here, there are no profits, and that's a long run equilibrium for the monopolistic competition model. If there were profits, firms would enter. So by working backwards, in a sense, from that condition that there can't be profits, that means, by definition, that the price has to equal average cost. That means that it must be the case that the demand curve is tangent to the average cost curve. And you can go through other examples of, you can work through yourself, suppose the demand curve weren't just tangent to the average cost curve, suppose it were cutting the average cost curve sort of there, not a very good drawing there, suppose it were like that, um, then then the firm would be able to produce at places where price was above average cost, it would be making profits, and more firms would enter. So that can't be an equilibrium. So it can rule out all those other possibilities. So the only possibility for an equilibrium is when average cost equals profits. And we can see that the condition that average cost equals profits, that, there's, that there are no profits, and that marginal cost equals mar marginal revenue, there will be a price in the market and a quantity in the market where, the, where that will hold, and, and that is what we say is the, is the equilibrium in the, in the market. So what happens when there's trade? Well, when there's trade, this demand curve um, will now shift out to the right because now you can sell to the foreign consumers uh, and it will also get flatter because there will be other firms uh, uh, th those consumers will there may be many who who want your um, product and and so your 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 demand curve now becomes more elastic if you lower your price a little more you can you can sell a lot more so we have a uh, shifting out and a flattening of the demand curve that's confronting each each individual firm. And so what we should see, compared with the, the no trade uh, equilibrium here, we should see the amount produced by the firm shifting to the right. So let's go over to a graph where we, where we do that. Now we have, uh, as I note here, we think, the firm thinks it has this really elastic demand. But, and, and so might want to produce way out here and, and charge a really low price. But what actually happens is all the firms at home and abroad are thinking the same thing. So they're all producing more, they're all increasing their, um, they're, they're increasing their production and lowering the price. So when the other firms lower their price, nobody actually comes to buy from, from this firm that we're considering here. So its actual demand turns out to be much, much steeper. If it lowers its price, it doesn't sell very much more. Why? Because everybody else is lowering their price too at the same, at the same time. So the actual demand that the firm faces when trade opens up is much more elastic than it 
uh, things and much less shifted to the to the right. It's still shifted to the right and we still will see an increase in production um, but we typically will see that some firms in our domestic market will exit uh, but when we look at the total number of firms, remember we have the whole foreign market, so the foreign producers are also producing varieties of this good, and, and so they're now in the market, so the total number of firms will, will increase. So we're going to produce more, uh, and that means there'll be lower average cost uh, for each firm, and there will be more varieties, and uh, so consumer welfare will be improved. So that's the basic gist of the effects of opening up to trade and monopolistic competition. Our first cut at that, taking a standard model of monopolistic competition where, where the firms are all basically identical and there are no barriers to entry, is that uh, trade is still welfare improving, primarily now because it induces firms to produce more and that generates uh, lower average cost and it also provides consumers with more varieties and that enhances consumer welfare. So that's the basic idea of the monopolistic competition model and this then explains the point of developing this model of course is to explain why we have so much intra-industry trade of differentiated products whereas our comparative advantage and our sector specific model uh, basically all relied on productivity uh, explanations or resource relative resource abundance explanations. Uh, this model instead says that trade will be largely driven by a country's ability to produce differentiated products. And so in some sense that's the definition of development is moving up the value chain of products so that you're producing more complex products that are more tailored to one segment of the consumer market's demand. Remember, uh, the differentiated products is different from a homogeneous product where everything is being produced the same. In a homogeneous product, the poorest country can produce the homogeneous product well because it requires the least amount of